Hey everybody, Rose Batter here, and welcome to episode 17 of my Umineko Let's Play. In the last episode, we had the much-awaited uh, first batch of murders, and it still shocked me with just how uh, bad it was, for lack of a better term. Both in terms of the, like, the descriptions and also how this one just felt much more personal and mocking to the characters with the note left, with the, um... The thing about Happy Halloween, Maria, with the, uh, the, the treats shoved into the bodies, uh, like some horrible pinatas. Just really brutal. And this is interesting because, uh, rather than the first episode where we still had some of the Ushiramiya siblings left, uh, the only one left is Rosa at this point. All of the servants survived, and Rosa is going to kind of take Natsui's lead. So, uh, I don't see that working out well. I don't think Rose is going to be nearly as effective as a leader as Natsui. So it's going to be interesting now. We're going to start to see the suspicions, uh, people starting to panic, uh, seeing how Rose is going to deal with it. It's going to be a completely different dynamic, and I'm very interested to see how she's going to handle this and how the characters are going to fare. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get into this episode. お嬢様、どうか気を静めください。誰が犯人かはまだわかりませんぞ。それにベアトリーチェ様は親方様の大切な貧客です。だから何だってんだ。本人の胸ぐら、ひねり上げてやれば白状するに決まってるぜ。目
and without excusing herself, she flung open the door. Beatrice! Jessica rudely barged into the room. The witch wasn't anywhere to be seen. <laughs> Jessica, thinking she might be hiding somewhere inside the room, peeked behind the curtains and under the bed, but she couldn't find anyone. However, there definitely were signs that the bed had been used. And although it's an odd way to say it, the atmosphere in the room had grown a little softer. It wasn't the hard atmosphere of a place normally devoid of people, like the chapel. You could definitely tell someone had spent the night in this room. But here's another locked door situation. Although she's a witch, she'd have no problem getting through a door. But we're already getting to the locked door where it's like, if there's only, they can be locked from the inside, but not from the outside. If she doesn't have a key, how did she get out? But she could not be seen. In reality, neither Jessica nor Goda had met Beatrice yet. They had only been told by those who had met her she was the spitting image of the person in the portrait. So they were doubtful about what her face really looked like. Is nobody going to say anything about the fact that the picture apparently has changed from, you know, Beatrice in, like, old-fashioned garb to now she's wearing, like, a schoolgirl's outfit? Or is that not actually what the picture looks like? And I don't know. However, Canon alone had met her, and he understood what kind of being that witch was and what kind of character she had. So he knew that if they were to force their way in here searching for her, she wouldn't let things go as they planned. She must have been watching us bitterly flail around in vain from somewhere, sneering at us. She's that kind of person. Because he was looking at things that way, Cannon was the first to find it. The other two were concentrating on finding the shape of a person, so they hadn't noticed. Near a water jug on the side table, there was a single sheet of writing paper. It was accompanied by a short message in a fountain pen, which had probably been used to write it. Cannon understood the witch. The witch would definitely ridicule them, as they found the six corpses, forced their way in here in rage, and were unable to find her. Ridicule has no meaning unless it's communicated. So in other words, this was definitely that. <laughs> Jessica quickly dashed over and violently stole the piece of paper. She probably wasn't trying to be violent. She just couldn't control her strength now. As soon as she read the message, Jessica went into a wild rage, crumpled the paper up, and threw it. Then she grabbed a table lamp that was by the side of the bed and violently swung it around, mercilessly hitting the walls and furniture with it. A light bulb shattered at once and scattered its shards across the room. And I could see, like, Beatrice coming by later and fixing the lamp just to further mock be like, look what I can do. <laughs> oh, Jessica, I think you're thinking a little highly of yourself. This was written on the paper. Oh, we got another. I'm guessing it's probably just re, uh, reiterating what is written here, but I'll double check that. Damn, that's cold. <laughs> Wow, it just gets worse. <laughs> it sounded like something that witch would write. It meant that she had predicted that one of the children who had lost their parents would come running in here. If she were hiding somewhere in the room, she would surely be rolling around with laughter. The witch was that kind of person. She sneered at people's misfortune, using it to stave off the boredom of a thousand years. So let's double check. Yeah, it's just the letter from the witch. Okay. <laughs> Go 
Dakota grabbed at the table lamp Jessica had been swinging around and took it from her. Because if she kept swinging it around, she might hit something and get injured. To Goda's eyes, Jessica probably looked mad with rage, burning with the flames of anger. But Cannon's eyes saw it differently. Those were probably tears of sadness, hidden by rage. Therefore, when at the moment the table lamp was taken from her, Jessica dropped to the floor, almost as if groveling, and started crying and scratching at the carpet. Goda was surprised, but Cannon was not. Her way of crying by brandishing her anger had been stolen from her, so this was inevitable. <laughs> Considering she was a daughter of the Ushromia main family, she was in a very shabby state. She scratched at the carpet with her fingernails, and even her feet writhed and scratched at it. Jessica cried very, very hard. Because if she didn't, her rage would start building up again and swallow her up. But over and over again, she remembered that letter's humiliating message. What kind of faces must your parents have had raising you to be such a hapless fool? <laughs> Yeah, I saw them. They had perfectly stupid faces, just like you. Now they are in Candyland with their bellies all full. the asthma attack. As Jessica cried and screamed, she triggered an asthma attack. The servants watching over her ran up to her hurriedly and rubbed her back, but that only provoked Jessica's wrath. <laughs> I was gonna say tough words for uh, you know when you're having an asthma attack. Uh, does someone have her inhaler? Jessica got up unsteadily, and as her asthma continued, she went out into the hallway. Oh, please let Cannon and Jessica have a moment. Let him hug her. Let him do something to try and comfort her. Cannon had noticed. Goda, who was much older, probably couldn't feel the tears in Jessica's heart. Cannon, who had noticed that himself, had to support her. Goda also understood, and he also knew of the modest relationship that Jessica and Cannon shared. So he understood everything and left it to Cannon. Kenan's voice was frail, but he nodded forcefully. After looking at his eyes, Goda also nodded forcefully. Goda was a veteran with many years behind him. He had seen a great number of people in his life, so he knew of the vigorous sparkle that could be found in the eyes of those who had self-control. He had seen that clearly in Kenan's eyes. Therefore, he would leave this to Cannon, but pro he's probably also like, this is awkward, I want to leave, okay, do what you gotta do, I'm out. Thinking about it, this may have been the first moment that Goda had trusted Cannon and relied on him for a job. It seemed Jessica was heading towards her room, leaning against the wall as she suffered from her asthma. Cannon followed after her wordlessly. If she had asked for a hand, he would have jumped over and supported her. But as long as Jessica didn't ask for that, he hid himself, watching over her from a distance where he could come to her rescue at any time. Speaking of hiding, 
in the shadows. Once again, where is Kumasawa during all this? Is she already dead? What has happened to her? As Cannon remained in that spot where 10 billion people would hope for someone else to be when their hearts felt like they would explode from sadness. He silently watched Jessica's back. And finally, she was crouching in front of the door to her own room. The asthma attack had stolen all of her strength, and her thoughts had gotten hazy from the lack of oxygen so she could no longer stand up. But right now, Jessica wasn't thinking that she wanted someone to lend her a hand, because she still hadn't been able to overcome the flames of anger. This music going on, I feel like we're going to have a moment between the two of them, and maybe they will be the two that will uh, be torn apart, the two who are close. Because even if someone had offered her a hand with good intentions, right now, Jessica would probably have wanted to grab it and lacerate it. And she understood how reasonable that would be. Until she could overcome the flames of her anger, she definitely wouldn't ask for help. Probably, Jessica no longer even had the willpower to call for help. But Cannon heard it. He definitely heard it. Cannon definitely heard that voiceless call for help, which is shared by those from across the world who are grieving and which, though they scream and scream, cannot be heard by anyone. Cannon softly knelt by Jessica's side and wordlessly offered her a shoulder. Even as Jessica kept coughing painfully, she accepted it, unlocked her room, and entered. Jessica had often said when she let her asthma run its course, it hurt so badly that it felt like she would vomit her whole stomach. Her face was pale and her gaze wavered, and yet the coughing continued. Even so, her sadness was probably even stronger. After having her sit on the bed, Cannon took an inhaler from a cute basket on a side table by the bed and handed it to her. Jessica sometimes forgot to walk around without, uh, with her medicine. When it seemed that this was the case, Cannon would take notice and secretly carry around the inhaler from the first aid kit in the servant room, but he hadn't done so today. He scolded himself, as though wondering how, after failing to bring it with him on a day like this, he could call himself furniture. Then he remembered the day when he had spoke, uh, spoken that word and somehow betrayed Jessica's feelings, which jarred Cannon's heart. But compared to Jessica's current sadness, he thought of that as a far more shameless emotion, and he suppressed it to the depths of his heart. <laughs> when she inhaled her medicine, Jessica's wild breathing calmed down bit by bit, and she was finally able to regain her composure. But the strength and willpower she had lost wouldn't allow her to rise up from the bed. Understandable. Literally just happened. Man, I can't get over how quickly the characters can bounce back from seeing stuff like that. I mean, I understand you're in a situation where you could die at any moment if the murder is still out there, but I'm just like, I, I'd be a wreck for, like, a while. Like, I feel like I would just want to curl up and not do anything. <laughs> Cannon regret, uh, regretted misspeaking. He had said, are you all right to her? Was he really unable to notice the pain in her heart? This was why he was ultimately mere furniture. This is why he couldn't become human. Please let them have a moment. Let her be like, can you just stay with me for a bit? Maybe hold her hand. Maybe he can feel some love before he dies, you know? And maybe he can say, I'm not furniture. I want that, but he's so stubborn. Cannon understood she still needed some time to cry alone. He told her to call him at any time, bowed and made to leave the room. Please. Nanika. Jessica had spoken as though she wanted him to stop, so Cannon had stopped. If she asks it, I'll do anything to help her. If I could heal the pain in her heart right now, I would even become a cane or a chair. If by doing that I could repair the pain in her heart that I gave her that day. <laughs> For a while, Jessica stared into Cannon's eyes. As though, despite stopping him, she had nothing to say. For a while, neither spoke. Jessica broke that silence. With a small voice. No! No, I thought there was gonna be a thing. Maybe she'd ask him to stay with her. Maybe she'd ask him to stay with her. 
イエーイしませんあなたを僕は一人にしないだから廊下にいますいつでも呼んでくださいああ For just an instant, it looked like some kind of hope flew to Jessica's eyes, but it was very faint and disappeared like the first snow does on the surface of a river. <laughs> Kenan bowed once again and closed the door. The fact he won't leave her alone, who knows, maybe they will be the ones to die next. He thought he had said something to give her some courage, but for some reason it felt like that had actually hurt her. Why? He didn't know. Surely that was because he was furniture. So even now he couldn't grasp hu、uh, human sadness. As Cannon repeatedly questioned himself, he walked down the corridor. It felt like the window at the end was coolly calling to him. Boka. Yapari Kagudishka Nainoka. It was still pouring outside, a dark, gray world. Even on days like this, Shannon would surely look at the ocean and know it was blue. But to my eyes, even if it cleared up, I would only see gray. As long as I cannot tell the blueness of the ocean, I am nothing but furniture imitating a person. <laughs> だからゆえに貴様は家具なのよ貴様 Just the way she spits out the word furniture, I love it. There shouldn't have been a trace of anyone in this corridor. It had been empty and cold, but those scoffing words approached Cannon from behind. When he turned around, he saw the witch. The witch, who hadn't shown herself when Jessica had searched for her with a rage bordering on madness, who had left that sneering letter to toy with her. どれほどジェシカを傷つけてきたか全く考えが及んでいまい家具だから<笑>お,お前のたわごとに付き合う気は毛頭ない僕を嘲笑うためだけに姿を現したというのかうぬぼれるな家具貴様ごとき嘲笑うにも足りぬわ <laughs> しかしそなたも一人ではそれに値しなくても二、oh, 人揃えば十分に足りる若々しき男女の悲運を笑う喜びは何度繰り返しても飽きぬのでな I just have a, I have a feeling because the expectation is it's going to be Shannon and George next but I think it's going to be maybe Cannon and Jessica being the next to go なんだとま,まさか貴様お嬢様を Oh god, I hate that. Oh, I hate it. I hate that face so much. Almost sounds like he wants to throw Shannon and George under the bus and let them be the next sacrifices. <laughs> It's almost thing like who does he love more? Does he love Jessica more or does he love Shannon more? Because only a certain number of people can,、uh, you know, survive the,、uh, the sacrifices. 
<笑>だからお前はジェシカを傷つけるだからお前は人間になれぬならばよいだろう貴様がジェシカを思い人と認めぬならばそれを受け入れてもよいだがジェシカは殺すなぜこのバーカが決まっておろうが殺したらそなたが歪めるだろうその表情が楽しいからの他に何の理由が必要なのか She's really letting that freak flag fly this episode. 儀式に従いわらわは気まぐれに13人を生贄にえとするだがそれ以上殺してはならないとの決まりはないわらわが楽しければ幾人でも殺すだから殺すわらわを思いっきり笑わせてみせろよカーグカーヌー At that time, Cannon definitely heard Jessica scream, oh shit. The instant he blinked and looked down the corridor, the witch, who had been there making a perfectly ordinary face until a second ago, had disappeared. Is this happening already? Doesn't this happen on, like, the second eve or something? What? Hold up. Let me check the epitaph really quick. She's already gonna what? Hold up. Hold up. And this music, though, is so, like, intense. Okay. Let's see. The epitaph. Yeah, on the second twilight, those who remain... Shall tear apart the two who are close. This is still. I uh, I guess this is sec technically the second day, but the twilight makes it seem like it happens on at nighttime. Alright, let's just see what happens. Right now, it was just him standing alone in the corridor, and the person he wanted to protect was asking for help and was right over there. But he knows if he goes over there, the two who are close are gonna get slaughtered. It was obvious what he should do, it wasn't logical. It was an electric reaction, without a trace of hesitation or idle thoughts. The person he wanted to protect was there and asking for help. So, in that moment, he genuinely felt that he wanted to be the person who was there with her. Oh no, I don't want them to die already. No. When he flew into Jessica's room, his eyes latched onto a bizarre scene. The room was a fantastical world where a, a blizzard of golden powder danced, almost as though gold leaf had been scattered inside a snow globe. No, that's not it. I've seen this spectacle before. This isn't gold leaf. It's countless gold butterflies. Beatrice's minions. Jessica was surrounded by countless butterflies and was waving her hands around, trying frantically to bat them away. Then again, she doesn't technically have to be part of the two who are close because it's like she said, she can kill as many people as she wants. <laughs> <laughs> Kenan rushed towards Jessica and violently brushed the group of butterflies away. The butterflies, beautiful yet filthy, surrounded Jessica's face, trying to crawl in through her mouth and nose. Poor Kenan, he must know that this is like... This is pointless to do, because if Beatrice wants to kill, she's going to kill, and yet he's still... He's still trying. Jessica gagged violently, almost as though the butterflies were triggering her asthma attack, sneering at her. Indeed, when Cannon ran towards Jessica, she choked. The butterflies stopped attacking her. And this time, they began to elegantly dance a rondo around the two. What, what does rondo mean? Because it's called Rondo of the Witch and Reasoning. Is that like a dance? I don't know. Oh. As he guarded Jessica, in pain and using her inhaler, Cannon yelled into the empty air. When he did, the empty air definitely laughed back, satisfied. Then she showed herself. It wasn't in response to Cannon's demand. It was obviously because appearing and sneering humiliated them even more, and it was more fun. This is all about the 
Yes, as her proving like, oh, you don't want to uh, show your feelings for Jessica? Well, I'm just going to make you. Okay, that is a tip, right? Let's take a look. There we go. Duck and onions. Duck and onion, green onions are the primary ingredients for a duck stew, and this gave rise to the Japanese phrase, a duck comes bearing green onions. Ah, uh, like far-fetched, in which a duck approaches carrying its own seasoning, ready to be eaten. That's kind of fucked up. That's kind of fucked up. I didn't even think about that. So far-fetched is just a duck bringing its own seasoning, ready to be like, all right, eat me. <laughs> this metaphorically refers to a situation where a series of lucky coincidences benefits you without any effort. Well, or, alternatively, where a naive person brings you what you want while unaware of the disadvantage to themselves. Perhaps because of this, a mark, or a sucker, in terms of scams, is also called a duck in Japanese. Interesting! Oh, look at that, I learned something new today. お下がりください。<laughs> <laughs> お嬢様、僕が守る。姫に騎士が揃わば、魔女が現れるのは必然よ。どれ？金蔵の家具がどの程度の力を持つか見せてもらおうではないか。She snapped her fingers, and there was a piercing sound. When she did, a blizzard of gold butterflies started up and they began to form a small mountain as they whirled around in a circle. Just like how a cold, wintry wind swirls and creates a mountain of leaves. Oh! What is this? From that mound of gold, a hand sprouted, and it appeared as though a resident of the world below was crawling at- What the fuck? They're introducing a new... person? thing? Jessica couldn't comprehend what she was seeing right now, and her mouth kept flapping open and closed. It was a literal attempt to take in and digest knowledge, to understand the incomprehensible. Whoa! Okay, wasn't expecting a literal, like, devil goat. What the fuck? This episode is crazy! That which was crawling up was probably an attendant serving the witch, and appeared to be wearing a uniform following the pattern of those who serve. But his face was different. It was strange looking. It was covered with pitch black hair. It breathed rotten breath, and its eyes were filled with the same strange subterranean glow as lava. And the symbol of those who are not human a pair of horns. It was the figure of a goat faced attendant who served the witch. <gasps> this is so crazy. Compared to episode one, where everything was kind of done in the background, and where is this are showing? They're showing literal, like, some sort of devil looking creature and Beatrice is like making her appearance in front of people what the hell Jessica could no longer decide what to say all this happening in front of her couldn't be explained with this world's common sense and she couldn't do anything except open and close her mouth maybe maybe Beatrice making one of those things appeared is what got all the uh, siblings to accept that she is a witch Oh no, Jessica hadn't noticed that this island had already been cut off from the rules of this world. But even so, she could understand that this goat attendant was the witch's familiar, and it was after her life. Oh yes, because she talks about familiars. Even if Beatrice herself can't get in through a door, uh, other things can. And it seemed the witch had already ordered that. And she faced Cannon with an expectant gaze. She faced him with a provocative gaze filled with expectation as though asking him how he planned to protect this maiden. The attendant had looked especially like a beast when it had been crawling up, but its composure, you could see it had more than enough dignity to be worthy of serving the Golden Witch, and you could tell it was overflowing with the joy of furniture wanting to meet its a uh, master's expectations. <laughs> <laughs> the goat attendant made a gesture that seemed to be a silent bow. With, uh, was that in response to its master? 
or was it offered to the opposing cannon? Then on the attendant's hand, a blade of wicked malice appeared. What the fuck is going on? This is ridiculous! <laughs> Jessica had been unable to understand what was happening in front of her for a while now. All she understood was that this thing was gleaming for the purpose of threatening her own life. And right now, that was enough. Kenan spoke quietly to Jessica, who was hiding behind his back. <laughs> this is so sad that we're gonna potentially see this happen right now. I was like, I like these guys. I really, they're, they're so sweet. Oh. <laughs> If Cannon pulls out a blade, uh, like, a blade like that thing, I'm gonna lose my mind. What the f- You literally just did it after- <laughs> What?! Literally, as I said, it- it happened. What is going on here? What- We are getting into some shonen anime shit right now. We're having a, a knife fight, a magic knife fight. Okay. He's not even... So, he knew he could do that? What? He knew he had these magical powers? Does Shannon have them too? She must. Oh my goodness. I have so many questions right now. <笑>黙れ。なるほど。<笑> Where we heard that term before about a uh, flame burning blue, certain uh, redhead we know of. みなもにその姿を映す。みなもに失ってを閉じれば。That's oh, something from Higurashi too about throwing a rock at the water and changing the Okay, okay. しかし、月を砕くことなどいたらない。だから僕は。この命尽きるまでお前の映る水面を叩き続けてやる。Okay, so when Cannon went after Beatrice in the first episode, I guess he had more power than I thought. It seemed like, I mean, it still seems futile for him to go up against a witch, but how was I supposed to know he'd have powers like this? Oh I never, never in my wildest dreams did I think Cannon and a, and a, a humanoid a goat would be having a magic knife battle. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> what is this? I'm losing my mind right now. The witch's words of admiration broke the silence and for just an instant broke Jessica's paralysis. <gasps> This is wild. This is wild. Just when you think you've got a handle on things, somewhat, they throw shit like this at you.
Oh, uh oh, oh. Oh, a strand of red remained on Kenan's cheek. The witch saw this and grinned broadly. Oh, did she? Did she do it? Or did he do it? Did he kill the goat? Oh, no. <laughs> Wishful thinking, I guess. Ah, uh, we just got a death. Oh, cannon. Oh, w w he straight up disappeared. He straight up just disappeared. Oh, no. Oh, the trail drawn by the goat attendant's blade drew a large arc in an empty space. Oh, Cannon wasn't there. He was behind it. What? Oh, what? 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 Oh, man. When I heard that sound, that means usually a, a body's found or someone has died. I, I, okay. All right, cool. If this battle of drawing sparkling trails was chess, then Cannon coming from behind was check. Yes, Cannon. So maybe she'll be like, all right, I'll let you live for now. I'm impressed. Press, press, press. And mate in seven. Had the goat attendant not even been given the right to go into death rows? As its knees buckled and it fell over, it crumpled softly into a bunch of gold butterflies. Damn, Cannon, nice job. I thought he was going to die. So there was no sound of it hitting the ground. Even those who couldn't understand this battle could definitely at least realize that Cannon had been magnificent. Yeah, I could see Beatrice be like, Oh, you're interesting. I'm going to keep you around for a little bit longer. Oh, no. Alright, oh, dude. I was like, man. It's like, save her your win, but no, he's going right for the boss. <laughs> Kenan's blade sliced diagonally through the gold, which is formed like a hot knife through butter, and in that instant she burst into gold and scattered. She scattered into several thousand gold butterflies, and for just an instant, the room was filled with the color of twilight. It was just as Kenan himself had said. Attempting to slice Beatrice was just the same as slicing the surface of the water where the moon was reflected. The witch's form was there, with an ordinary expression on her face, as though she had been there the whole time, behind Cannon. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I don't think- I don't think she's gonna kill him yet. I think she's gonna be like, Alright, uh, that was impressive. I will reward you by allowing you to live longer and let Jessica live longer. Oh no. Oh no. So much for that. Oh no. Alright, so we got Beatrice. Oh, Jessica. Oh, she's gonna step in and defend Kenan's honor. Let's let's hope they survive, at least for now. Maybe this will be the thing to break Kenan out of believing he's furniture. それはとても高潔なもので、自らが決めるものを。家具だから意見しちゃいけないとか、家具だから自分の人生を持っちゃいけないとか、そんなのないよ。お嬢様。あいつを挑発してはいけません。うん。はっきり言っておくせ。カノ
私を見捨てることなんていくらでもできただろうにそうしなかった自己犠牲は人間だけが持つ高潔な精神だだからカノン君は人間なんだだから訂正しろカノン君をカグだなんて呼ぶな二度っお嬢様 Oh no I didn't sorry I didn't mean to cut you off Jessica Oh this is such a good speech Uh oh Uh oh <laughs> Hopefully she'll be amused by them and keep them alive a little bit longer. I know they're all gonna die anyway, but I'm just like, I don't want them to die right now. Give them some time to sort out their feelings and maybe, maybe Cannon will have a revelation before he's killed. <laughs> that he is human, he's not furniture. <laughs> it's like uh, Beatrice says, it's, it's even sweeter when, you know, the relationship blooms and everything and they're happy for a little while before they're torn apart. So they haven't really had a chance to have that relationship. So maybe, maybe they'll confess their feelings for each other. Well, Jessica already has confessed her feelings, but I want them to have a moment is what I'm saying before they die. Whether that's uh, more tragic or not. And that makes me <laughs> a bad person. I'm just like, I want to see it. Is it the twilight yet? I would assume twilight would be nighttime. It's still day, right? Uh oh. Oh no. Looks like she's just sealed their fate. Oh no. Oh, we actually gonna see it. So we're actually gonna see. Instead of the deaths being, you know, behind the scenes and mysterious, uh, we might actually get to see it happen. I don't want to. The witch summoned her own furniture with a mixture of laughter and anger on her face. Oh. Okay. There's going to be a lot of characters. There are seven different... Okay, so the pillars are represented by actual, well, humanoid-looking things. So that's going to be a lot of people to keep... Uh, you know, like track of. Oh, no. no. It took Cannon less than an instant to understand. That goat face from a second ago had been nothing more than a pawn to the witch. However, there was a marked difference in the value of this piece, of this furniture that it had been newly summoned. <laughs> oh, he's gonna fight her again, but probably lose this time. It's like he said, she's like next level. The goat was just like a maybe a mini level boss. She's more of like a sub boss. <laughs> Plus, Ken has probably exhausted himself just fighting that uh, goat thing. There's a death, that's probably, Cannon's probably done. And that laugh, yep. Ah, oh, shit. Or Jessica. Oh no, he went right, right past Cannon and killed Jessica, just to make him suffer. Oh, jeez. Oh man, they're really pulling the curtain back of this one. It's like before... The first chapter, the deaths were so mysterious, and this one, they're showing you exactly how they're happening. Oh, 
Oh, no. Cannon's back had been the target. But Jessica had... Oh, she stepped... Oh, my heart. She stepped in and took the blow for him. Oh, God. Jessica had predicted it. She had predicted the sneering witch's target would be the complete opposite of fair and honest. His back. But she had no way to block it. She had no aspirations to martyrdom. She simply thought there was no other way than this to protect Kenan's back. So she could do nothing but block it with her own back. Aww. She's gonna die, like, collapsing on him like a hug. The furniture of the witch, which had changed its form into a demon stake, was stuck deep into Jessica's back. It was an obvious fatal wound that reached as far as her lungs. Oh, God. When she saw this, the witch let out a loud, evil laugh. Because it had hit where the witch had predicted. Everything, everything was as the witch had predicted. No, that is so... Ah, oh, so evil. Alright, see another one here. And of course, they all have to be cute girls, don't they, right? <laughs> yes, Cannon. His, his final, uh, you know, what's the word I'm thinking of? His final act of resistance, I guess, and defiance. Except Beatrice would probably be like, Oh, I knew you were going to say that, too. <laughs> You're going to be killed by me again? Oh, did she, was she the thing that killed him in the first episode? Oh. Oh, yes, your chest. Because he, I guess he was pretty wrathful, right? Uh, when he got killed. So I, I guess he did die. I guess he did die in the first episode. I had my doubts about that in my, my theories video about how I wasn't sure if Cannon actually died. But all right, I guess he did. Girl, you're starting to sound a little bit like the lustful one. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, she sounds more lustful than the lustful one. <laughs> oh, the two of them dying together, sort of in each other's embrace. There was no way to block it. The sound of a woodpecker filled the entire room, and before he could blink, it was already right at the center of his chest. When you take a piece in chest, it's impossible by the rules for your opponent's piece to defend. So this was an obvious result, and one even specified by the rules. Kenan landed on his knees, and he apologized. Not to the witch, and not to Milady. He apologized to Jessica. Oh, so sad. Oh, and then I bet once Shannon finds out that Cannon got killed, she's gonna feel so much guilt because he took her place. She was supposed to be the one. Or, no, I guess Shannon kind of thinks that she's gonna be the one that's gonna be killed in the second Twilight, but it turns out to be Cannon. Oh. <laughs> Cannon finally fell over. He landed next to Jessica, and the two lay there like Gemini. Oh, 
じゃないよはいそれに気づくのが遅すぎた君の本当の名前聞きたかった Are we gonna find out? Or is he gonna die before he can tell us? Come on. No, he's not gonna. He's not gonna. Be. No. Jessica doesn't even get that. In his last moments, Ken had wanted to tell her his real name, but Jessica had already fallen into a sleep from which she would never wake. So, Ken's real name, which he had protected until the day, in the end, he couldn't tell it to Jessica. Book. Ingen. <laughs> Those were the last words Cannon left behind. Oh, you gotta, you know, give props to Cannon. <laughs> Both times so far, he uh, he did it. You know, he was defiant till the end. You know, like he tried to stand up to the witch. わらわせるな家具が。100年を経ようと家具は家具よ。捨てる時に家具のために墓穴を掘る馬鹿がどこにいる家具は叩き割って薪に捨て、後には灰しか残らぬわ。そういうことよ。家具に刻める墓碑など
the phones or anything. Maybe it's just like they're in some alternate universe where there is no way to contact the outside world. ローザ様には何とお伝えいたしましょうか。何をして過ごすも自由だと言っておる。歌王が踊ろうが、首を吊ろうが、言いたぎる王様に飛び込むも自由。13人が死ぬまで好きに過ごせばよいのだ。そん
そうありがとう若い子の気持ちは若い子の方が汲み取れるかもしれない今はそっとしておく方がいいんでしょうねローザさん私らにこれ以上ここにとどまってできることは何もありません電話は普通でしょうが明日になれば船が来てくれてそれで警察へ連絡できるでしょう警察の捜査のためにもここはこのまま残すべきです私も南条先生に同感ですこのようなところにいつまでもおられますとお体に触ります戻り紅茶をお入れしましょうそうね私もそれに賛成よバトラ君もジョージ君ももういいここは閉めましょう警察が来た時のためにもここはこのまま残しておいた方がいいわそうですねバトラ君大丈夫かいああ流せる涙は流し尽くしたぜもう大丈夫さここは肩を冷やします父さん母さん今日までありがとう僕はきっと父さんたちの期待を裏切らない男になるジョージ spoke his last words of farewell to his parents <laughs> I can just imagine Ava like her ghost raising up and being like if you don't want to betray our expectations don't marry that like don't marry that、uh, servant After seeing that, Battler followed suit. Taken on their own, their faces made it look like they were sleeping, which made it all the more bitter. Well, better than the first time you found them with their faces torn off. これは何気色の悪い落書きだね犯人が書いたのかな悪趣味に過ぎますなこれはひどい When the door to the chapel was closed we learned about that creepy graffiti for the first time 私たちが見つけた最初からもう書かれておりました And here comes Maria's little、uh, lesson about all that and what the What that circle means and everything, I'm sure. Hanin got kaita mono ni chigai nai de show. Hanin wa majo da kara. Kori a akuma o yobi das maho jin ka nani ka da ttero ka. There she goes. There she goes. Kori wa taiyo no nana no maho jin da yo. Son na no mo shira nai nda ne. Ai ta! Kora! Oh no. Before it was just like, you know, Battler tapping her on the head, but、uh, Rosa, I feel, is going to knock a little bit more into her. Especially because it sounds like she's kind of desecrating the dead by mocking them. Maria, continue. シュは私の稼を解かれました。私はあなたに感謝の生贄を捧げ、主の皆を呼ぶでしょう。感謝の生贄父さんたちが殺されたのはこの魔法人のための生贄だって言うのか。心を落ち着けて、ジョージ君。
そういうわけかここは礼拝堂だしねマリアちゃんのマリアじゃなく聖母マリアの方の意味かもしれないよ。Little bit of a stretch, George, but I was just like, だとすればハロウィンの名を語った神への冒涜とも受け取れる悪魔と契約した魔女たちは神の名を常に怪我し続けることを誓うという。Oh, uh, I have to. I totally forgot to track the thing for、uh, Canon and Jessica. Oh, wait. Oh, so they did go back. Oh, they did go back in time. Shit, I should have checked it right after they died, but how could I have possibly have known that Beatrice was going to reverse time? Is that what she's going to do? She's just going to kill Jessica and Cannon over and over again, and that's going to be like, you know, the ultimate insult? Oh my goodness. Well, okay. Okay. Well, that kind of confirms it right there. So you sense, kind of, Yiba. これは実に魔女的な犯行だね詳しいのねマリアの受け売りええそんなとこです礼拝堂か、oh. Now we're going into the cool like detective music here <laughs> 礼拝堂にわざわざ呼んで殺した This really oh god this song really gives me like Phoenix Wright vibes and I'm here for it ローザおばさんこの礼拝堂には何か特別な意味とかあったんですか特別な意味ってどういう意味いやその人間6人の死体をはるばるここに運び込んでこんな凝ったデコレーションをしたここに6人を呼んでから殺したのか6人を殺してからここに運び込んだのかは断定できないがどちらにしても大きな手間がかかる犯人にはここで六人に死んでほしいどんな理由があったってんだそうですなあんな凝ったことをすれば警察が来た時不利な証拠を見つけられる可能性が非常に高いでしょうそれを犯人が見越さなかったはずもないなら犯人はどうしてわざわざそんな手間をかけてまでこんなことをしたのだろうということになりますなだとしたらここで出てくる疑問は一つ6人の死体発見場所になるここにどんな意味があるのかってことだここはお父様の大切な礼拝堂だったの私が子供の頃からここに立ち入ってはいけないと厳しく言われていたわうんマリアも前にここに来てものすごい怒られたうん大切な礼拝堂後ろ宮本家にとって何か縁のあるわからないのお父様はこの礼拝堂をとても神聖視していて何度か化粧直しの工事をさせるくらい大事にしていたわでもみんなも知っての通りお父様は黒魔術が大好きなくらいで敬虔な信者だったわけじゃないここで神に祈りを捧げてたなんて聞いたこともない私の知る限りでもここに親方様がいらっしゃったことはありません私たちもここを開かずの礼拝堂と呼んでそのお化け屋敷のような感じでふすき見悪く思っておりましたお父様自身全く近づかなかったのになぜか年に何度か使用人たちに大掃除をさせていたわ常に清潔にしていてまるで。いつ使用する時が来てもいいようにという感じだったにもかかわらず開かずの礼拝堂ってか<笑>不謹慎だが面白い響きじゃねえか南条先生はじい様の古い友人なんだってそのあたりの経緯を聞いたことは随分昔に聞いたことがありますが何と言ってはぐらかされたか忘れましたそうそうこんなことを言っておりましたっけいつか自分もあそこで祝福を受けることもできるかもしれないしかしそれは奇跡でも起きない限り訪れないとどういう意味だろうな<笑>
礼拝堂ですることってなんだまさか自分の葬式ってんじゃねえだろうな金蔵さんに限ってそんなはずは死後のことより生きている今に一生懸命な方でしたしかしそのせいで遺産問題をこじれさせる種としてしまったようですが、oh, あと礼拝堂ですることってなんだろうな Get married? 祈り懺悔も礼拝堂だっけ<笑>何にしろうさんくさいねどういう理由かわからないけれどおじいさまにとってその南條先生の言っていた通り奇跡でも起きない限り祝福を受けられないというのはこの礼拝堂を建てた時から決められていた宿命のようだね。Okay, this is important information, sounds like. Wouldn't receive a blessing unless a miracle occurred. どうしてそんなことがわかるのほら、あそこにはっきり記されてます。ほら、あそこに。ジョージ・アニキ pointed to the relief with rusted gold letters on the arch above the door. It looked like some message was written there in English. The rust showed that the message had been there since construction. This door is opened only at the probability of. I gave up after I was unable to finish reading the first of the two lines. It looked like the others could read it properly. Eto Tashka Korewa M B T Q Dakara. えっとえっと、いくつのことだっけ確かえっとえっと、うん、とにかくこれはすごいよ両手の指じゃとても足りない Oh, is it using, wait, Roman numerals for the letters? MV, I'm just trying、uh, 確かに奇跡でも起こらないとダメだね I'm so confused right now ですな、何事も博打的に例えたかった昔の金蔵さんらしい言い方です。No, B is not, that's not a Roman. I'm just trying to think in terms of letters, where it's like letters representing numbers, where he said that's huge. なんだなんだ、みんな読めたのかよ。Yeah, I'm like Valor, like, come on, what does it say? 誰か俺にも意味を教えてくれ。英語くらい勉強しなよ。この程度読めないでよく高校に入れたね。Oh no. Oh, okay, that was Badler. I was like, I was afraid Rosa was just like smack, 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 smack. At least Badler only like gives her a little knock once. Maybe it's like a one in a however many chance, like a really large number. <笑>天文学的低確率を基礎とするつまりこの扉が開かれる奇跡はおそらくものすごい膨大な魔力を必要とするに違いないよ。よし、ご苦労、もう黙っていいぞ。どうぞおばさん。マリアを英会話教室に
そういうメルヘンチックな話だと思う。そういうメルヘンチックな話だと思う。そういうメルヘンチックな話だと思う。そういうメルヘンチックな話だと思う。そういうメルヘンチックな話だと思う。そういうメルヘンチックな話だと思う。あと、君が悪いとは言ったけれども、礼拝堂の内装はとても華やかだった気がするの。お父様が死んだ愛人との結婚式を夢見て、この礼拝堂を建てたという想像は、案外外れていないかもしれない。この礼拝堂を建てたその当時から、おじい様はこの教会を使うことは、生涯ないことを知っていたのだろうね。でも、何かの奇跡で魔女がよみがえることを祈ったそしてもしもその奇跡が起こったならここで結ばれようと思ったなるほどそう考えると確かにここはベアトリーチェ様にとっても大変意味のある場所ということになりますね決して開かれぬ礼拝堂と知りつつ It's weird seeing Gota have this much、um, screen time. <laughs> Are we actually going to get to learn a little bit more about him? I could definitely see him trying to betray people and trying to like, double cross people if it means he might survive. Even though Gota san's body was even bigger than mine, his words were touching. Everyone was silent, but it seemed they agreed with that view. <laughs> それでもなお奇跡の日を夢見ていたのでしょうな金蔵さんは若い日にはとてもロマンチストな方だったわかる気がします<笑>どうだろうなでも年に4回みんなで入って掃除してたんだろ何が赤ずだ俺たちだって現にこうして出入りしてる Like, I can't get over. I know I say this en、uh, enough times, but I can't get over how quickly they're,、um, they change their emotions. Like, they just saw their dead parents, and now he's kind of like doing a little bit of laughing and stuff. He's, it's probably some sort of、um, like coping mechanism. He's going into investigation mode because at this point he's like, I'm not going to cry. I'm going to focus on trying to solve the mystery of who killed my parents. So, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. カチャリとやって入ったただそれだけの話だぜバカバカしい<笑>おでわいどういうことど,どういうことって何がすか I thought all I'd done was mess around because I didn't like the way the atmosphere had turned all sappy but Auntie Rosa had suddenly jumped on me with a really serious face Auntie Rosa's face grew increasingly pale. She looked at the magic circle on the door, then at her hand, back and forth, back and forth. Do, do you know what I said, Rosa? Yes, Rosa. This is the key of the door. This is the key of the door. This is the key of the door. Oh. Eh? Oh. <laughs> She's mocking me too. I didn't realize. I didn't make that connection. <laughs> When a kid pulls a prank, it sometimes goes unnoticed by the adults, and the kid who did it loses heart. If one of those pranks catches someone later on, it makes the kid really happy. Mario's celebration just now looked a lot like that. Uh, uh, hi. その鍵は一本しかございません。親方様の大切な礼拝堂の鍵ですので、一本しかなく、複製もありません。普段から、使用人室のキーボックスに大切に保管されていますが。そうよ。そしてそれがなくなってたと源氏さんは言ったわね。何者かがそれを奪い、封筒に入れてマリアに手渡したのよ。Oh, here comes the、uh, accusations, most likely. Maybe of the servants because if it was in the servant room. But then again, of course, now that Beatrice is an actual physical being, they're all going to be like, it was her. Everything is because of her. That's 
そんなバカなこれは妙な話になってくる Yeah, oh my gosh, I, yeah, I feel so dumb. How could they have possibly unlocked the chapel if the key was given to Mario before all this happened? No, do you go to the shoka? But I see you and Nanny got under the sub party. What does she know this? Donadoka sits me still, I eat a dakimas in Kona. Goda and Nanjo's failure to understand definitely wasn't because they were stupid, they didn't know. They didn't know how long the only key to the chapel had been in Maria's hand. But I knew, and yet I didn't even make that connection, so I guess I am stupid. <laughs> Auntie Rosa kept closing the chapel door, locking it, pulling on it to check the lock, and opening it again. Her face was becoming pale again. Oh shit, she's gonna be like, Maria, you did this somehow. You somehow went to the chapel, killed all these people, put the bodies there, and then put the <laughs> put the key back in your envelope, and then acted like nothing happened. <laughs> Here we go, another locked room. I guess every chapter, the first bodies, the first six bodies will always be found in a room that will be locked. But the room will change. Get some deja vu here. Different people dying, different rooms, but still the same kind of locked room conundrum. We had been confused by the six deaths. We thought that we had figured something out after hearing about that weird magic circle and the history of the chapel. That had been all a worthless problem. From midday yesterday until this morning, this chapel had been a locked room. But our parents had been with us until last night. How had the culprit opened this door? And how had they locked it? Here we go. <laughs> oh, I love this. <laughs> oh my god. Badler, why are you and me like so on the same page a lot of the time? <laughs> So I guess Badler, he's definitely more stubborn than I am. I have, I, I guess I kind of have gone on to uh, be a believer of some kind that she exists and has magic powers. Do I want to say with 100% certainty? No. Uh, but I'm definitely leaning more towards it now, but Badler is like, until the end, he is denying that she has magical powers. It'll just be more chapters of her breaking down his theories and mine. Yeah, except we never figured out the secret to that either. Ha! <laughs> <笑>情報が足りないから様子見不確定情報があるからそうなったら人間の思考停止の言い訳はいつもそれよ人間風情が何を気取るかラプラスの悪魔の座に及ばねば思考を巡らせること一つできないというのかこの無能がそれに貴
己を締め付ける圧搾機の力を強めていく結果になるだけよ<笑>おうそうなら言わせてもらうぜこれがそもそも密室かどうか検証不能だ悪魔の話が出てきたんで俺も言わせてもらうぜ密室でないことの説明はできるこうやら出入りできるというのを示しちゃいいんだからなだが密室であることの証明は不能だ無限の方法の全てを否定はできないつまり悪魔の証明ってやつだぜ。So this is going to be the name of the game with this one is Devil's Proof. Before it was flipping the chessboard and now it's Devil's Proof. ミスという定義は実は証明不能なのさ。情報不足を言い訳にした思考停止の次はそうまあよい。それがそなたの指し手だというなら認めようぞ。続けるがよ。なぜ。お前は礼拝堂がミスだと言いたいらしい実際俺もさっき中をぐるっと見させてもらったが確かに扉以外から出入りする方法は見つけられなかっただがそれは俺が見つけられなかったというだけでミスの証明にはならないわけだ俺には見つけられなかった隠し扉なんかがあったら全ての前提は吹っ飛ぶぜつまり俺が隠し扉を見つけられようと見つけられまいと密室を出入りできる方法 X を常に否定できないわけさそしてその方法 X は魔法でなくても実行可能さ何しろ隠し扉なんだからよこの礼拝堂だってそうさ発見不能な隠し扉がどうせあるんだだから推理なんてする必要もなく魔法なんかありえないってわけさほうほうそういう論法か<笑>甘いな想定していた一手だぞならばわらわも受け手を指そうわらわは人間風情の推理小説とやらに出てくる密室というものを常々バカバカしいと思っているなぜか使い方が間違っているからよ推理小説に登場する密室をお前は本当に密室だと思っているのか思ってなどいまいどういうトリックを使えば密室に見せかけられるかそう思っているつまり人間どもが積み重ねた100年の密室殺人などただの一度も完成されたことはないのだヒュー言うじゃねえかよ<笑>スイーマニアは怖えぞクリスティが墓の下で歯ぎしりしてるぜ<笑> Is that a reference to Agatha Christie? I'm guessing? I don't know. I don't know too.、Uh, I don't know too many authors, to be honest. w a r a w a h o n t o n o m i s h t o u m i d a s t e r s o s t e s o r e o l i s o de k i r n o d a n o z e a w a r a w a m a j o d a k a r a y o a k u m a n o s h o m e w a a k u m a o t s r e t e k r e b a s h o m e d e k i r n o d a t a n a n a r a w a k o t u g o m a j o n i t o t e a k u m a w a y o k i t o m o y o いくらでも連れてきてやる上等だぜ親父たちは隠し扉を使って礼拝堂に入ったあるいは運び込まれたこの一手をお前はどうかわしてみせるってんだよ I was gonna say if if she、uh, makes that goat devil thing appear in front of him would he concede or would he most likely just be like that's some sort of trick as well it just feels like no matter what she shows him he will deny it till the end こうだ生死は捨ておく6人は確かに扉から入ったはあバカ野郎鍵がかかってんだぞどうやってわらわが魔法で開けて中へいざなったそんなわけねえだろ魔法なんて認められねえ以上そいつを受け入れるわけにはいかねえ
I still really want to know what she showed them at that dinner that made all of them, even Kyrie, uh, accept her being a witch. She actually gonna, is she actually going to show us, though? Probably not, because that would kind of ruin the illusion and the mystery. So why don't you just show him what you did? He, it's, he's probably going to deny it, but at least you're giving him some sort of proof. そなたが我らを認め屈服するか否かそれについてだけは同感だぜお前のお望み通り決着はきっちりつける <laughs> Alright, here's the new rule that this is based on. Because the whole this whole thing is called a new rule. I figured it was the uh going back in time, but まさかまさかそなたらが求めてやまなかったものを与えようというのだ貴様ら無能どもがいつも嘆いて見せる思考停止の理由情報不足そしてそれに対し情報を与えると今度はその情報の真偽を疑う根拠否定便利よの無能を
小学生でもできるぜなら早速再開しようじゃねえかさっきの続きだぜ So she could be doing things like everything she says in red is she's telling the truth, but she could be like maybe you could twist the words to mean something else where she would technically still be telling the truth, but maybe like omitting certain information or things like that. Regardless of whether they were alive or dead, the six definitely entered through the door. Okay. And we saw the flashback that at least it seemed like they were alive when they were in the chapel. So if we can, if we can base that in reality、um, of them at the chapel and being alive, then they came in through the door alive. その証拠はあるのかよ Stop! Yeah, she's like, you already are going against, the, you agree to the rules, and you're already, you're already like trying to argue them. わらわはすべての犯行を魔法で行うだからどんな不可能犯罪もお前の目の前で魔法の杖を振るってみせれば済んでしまうしかしそれではゲームにならないチェスを指しながら勝敗を無視して相手に殴りかかる蛮行にも
そろそろチェックメイトかまだまだお前は6人は扉から入ったと言ったがこの正面扉とは言ってない他の隠し扉から入ったのかもしれない So she's not, she's not just omitting, you know, information. Because the initial thing she said sounded very vague, but now she's like really laying it out for us. ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
そうさ思考の向きが逆だったんだ本当の考え方はこうさもともと密室じゃない礼拝堂をどうやって密室に見せたかだ来たな人間どもの生み出した100年の思考術か試してみるがよいぞ<笑>赤で語ってもらうぜ無理ならば拒否しろ行くぜ Oh, I like that. So now, that's like he said, he can use that to his own advantage where she has to tell him the truth. And if she doesn't, then he can assume that it's not the truth. Ah, clever Bowdler. This man, he thinks he has turned away from his defensive posture. Impudent. ほんとに昨日の昼前からマリアの手に渡っていたのかどうかな。うん。長いな。かいつまむがよい。こういうことさ。俺たちは鍵が昨日の昼から使用不能だと思い込んでいる。だから昨日の昼から今朝まで密室
あ、ほう。んだ、誰も触れることができなかった。これも。<laughs> it's funny this like this feels so triumphant but there's still a whole lot of bad stuff about to happen but I'll enjoy this while we have it しかし。<laughs> マリアは手下げを完全な監視下に置けなかった。魔法なんか必要ない。人間に可能な密室トリックだ。人間である犯人はマリアに鍵を渡し、翌朝、ローザおばさんに使わせることで、その間が密室であったかのような幻想を作り
ローザおばさんが開封するまで一度も使用されていない You guys are probably sick of hearing me say this, but like this right now with him like turning the whole thing around, the gestures of the suit, sort of the hair, fuck, the Phoenix Wright vibes are off the charts and I am here for it. I love it. <laughs> I'm waiting for her to have like a villain breakdown at this point. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm still waiting for Beta to reach it to start laughing and be like, Oh, you thought you had me. Let me throw it back at you. マリアが受け取った封筒の中の礼拝堂の鍵はローザおばさんが開封するまで一度も使用されていないうう。ほえるならば口にしろ。リザインだったな。これで決まりだぜ。これが真相だ。マリアの鍵はローザおばさんが今
その差し筋の甘さは必ず身を滅ぼすぞお前はやはりわらわには勝てぬのだ後ろ宮バトラー OK so <laughs> What even was this episode? I never would have expected that Cannon had special、uh, magical powers,、uh, he, fighting a, like a, a goat demon and unfortunately, ultimately losing. And, you know, Jessica as well. And then it seemed like time went back. So are they, are they still dead? Are, are they still going to die? Is someone else going to die instead? And also, that whole thing about the rule with Beatrice. So now we've got this rule. About、uh, everything in red is a absolute truth. So now we're starting to get the rules of this world, which is what I need in order to try and figure out the mystery of everything. So that was a wild, wild episode. I never would have expected that to happen, but it was a really good one. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and stay tuned for the next one. Until next time, bye guys. Special shout outs to my top tier patrons Sparky, Matt Goldsmith, Derek Nichol. Harry Gaziff, Icognito, and Asborn Kennedy. 